I know. It's been a while. Don't worry. I remember that one of the last things I promised on this channel was no more long gaps between videos like this, but the reality of the situation was different than expected. I don't really know when I will have the time or energy to produce these kinds of things in full anymore, but I miss it. I miss the editing, the recording, the writing, I even miss my neighbor's leaf blower ruining audio recording sessions a little bit. I get a real kick out of the idea of making these videos somewhat regularly. If I could find a way to consistently work on videos like the Danganronpa, Final Fantasy IX, or Kingdom Hearts videos, I think I'd be in a good place, but that seems to be harder and harder to find for me lately. The reality of the situation now is I don't have as much time as I used to because of a few key changes in my life, and I remain a one-man team in all of the things that I do. I'm working full-time now, and I've resolved not to rely on takeout food so much anymore, which means I'm spending more time in the kitchen, cooking and cleaning up after myself. I'm now living alone, uh, no roommates or anybody to split housework with. So all of this adds up to a whole lot less energy and time. I don't have as much opportunity or drive to marathon games for videos anymore, and often the thought of opening up my editor to start the monotonous grind of cutting up audio and video while rewarding in the end is a bit daunting in the moment. Moment. A bunch of things happened all at once back at the end of 2017 that I won't go into here, but kind of really took the wind out of my sails. They made it quite clear that YouTube had to take a back seat to my real life, especially in light of it not working out for me like I hoped it would. I mean, you know, the way I think we all hoped it would work out for everyone back then. And while it's still a possibility, it's getting smaller and smaller in the distance. Priorities get in the way of things that are unrealistic, and until I find out how to just let these kinds of things be fun again, they will remain simply unrealistic. Sorry for the pity party here, I'm not trying to bring down the mood, it's just that the mood is already down and this video is coming from a point of rest. For anyone watching this who has left nice or supportive comments on old videos, thank you. It means a lot, and I have read all of them, even if I didn't respond to them. I do take value in the fact that things I have made have helped or inspired or even just entertained people with degrees of separation from me. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be an apology to my viewers for the fact that what used to be video time has had to become relaxation and decompression time, because I fully acknowledge that those things are important and vital to my survival as a social functional person, but if it is anything, this part of the video is kind of an apology to myself for not maintaining a creative outlet. I have come close, I was hoping to break my YouTube silence for a while now, but it seems that getting to that point is my new challenge. I have several scripts that were either not produced initially, or ones that I've been scratching away at since the start of this unceremonious hiatus, but every time I got close, something would distract me, or discourage me, or whatever. It was kind of defeating, it was like every time I thought about going back to something I used to find fulfilling, it quickly framed itself as a burden and that any attempt to recapture that creative outlet was a failure in my mind. In my moments of retreat, however, between recent fruitless footage capturing sessions, work, and etc., I have returned, time and time again, to something that has kinda always been there for me. The game that I am forever glad came down from space to enrich our world, that would embrace my failures free of judgement and redefine what I think of as a game and what a game can be. That game is Minecraft. Uh, that's a pretty hefty statement to make, redefining what a game can be. But Minecraft is a game that actually filled a space in my gaming passions that, for years upon years, went unattended to. It's hard to explain exactly what this is, I can't really think of a good name for it, but in so many fantasy-based games I've played over the years, I would find myself at a point of rest, often towards the end of a game when everything is kind of just at equilibrium, and the story is just waiting for you to go beat up the final boss, and I would go back and just explore explore the environments again at my leisure. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is a big one for this. One of my favorite things to do as a young Zelda player was to retread temples and dungeons that I had already finished on that save file, and just appreciate the aesthetic design or architecture of the thing. If I had to pinpoint an origin for my love of castles and big fantasy architecture, it might be here. When I would wander the spirit temple and just imagine what the purpose of all of these rooms were before they became puzzle pieces, or try to figure out what the shadow temple might have looked like before it became haunted. 
Somehow, I found value in simply existing in a game space back then. It was enough to just be in the game world for an hour or two at a time, not even really accomplishing anything. I guess you could say I was destined to be the future audience for walking simulators, but I never would have guessed that my entire longing to simply exist in a game space would be made into a game, and what's more, that it would let me rearrange what was there. If you were to boil down Minecraft to its slug line or elevator pitch, you might land on something like, you can build stuff and eventually go fight a dragon, or it's like Lego, but the catch is you have to go look for and excavate the blocks you want to use, or it's a survival game with a focus on crafting and building mechanics. Any of these do a pretty good job of explaining the experience to another person, but in a lot of ways, to me, it kind of goes deeper than that. At its core, Minecraft is a game about moving through a three-dimensional grid of digital space using in-game commands to determine whether points on that grid are passable or impassable. Everything beyond that, what color the impassable points are, what it takes to change that binary state, how they behave, etc., is all the awesome set dressing and icing on cakes that appeals to my emotional and mechanical investment. Where the game's profundity lies for me on a functional level is that it doesn't codify success for the player, or at least it doesn't specifically do so. There is no mechanical director to speak of, allowing the player to find their own satisfaction in playing the game without looking for objectives on a list, or the game congratulating you for doing what it told you to do. And like, I enjoy this. This is a little hit of good job that I need from time to time, but I'm not always looking for that. Sometimes I want a game that allows me to validate myself, beyond the simple choice of turning on a game rather than leaving it off. To me, there is value in a game that through gameplay alone allows you to recognize an objective of your own volition, achieve that objective following the same setup and rules of play as everywhere else, and be rewarded with progress that only goes as far as being recognized by your own experience. It's a tricky thing to grasp for sure, and I can't really think of much else out there that captures this. The closest I can think of, of games that I am familiar with, is Myst and its related games, though the first one is probably the closest to what I'm trying to get at. A chance to exist and explore a game space with puzzles hidden within it that at no point offers a mechanical incentive or inspiration to go out and do the things the game offers you. All of that happens in the text of the game, either the books in Atrus's library or your unsettling conversation with Cirrus and Akinar, there's no menu or list of objectives to guide you into doing things. You just have to let the game be in front of your eyes and then carry on with it to your leisure. Dark Souls is another example, though more tenuously so. The first half of the game in particular does this for me. Casting aside for a second the difficulty and emotional strife the game is known for, I was, and still am, always more interested in the way the game tells you what needs to happen than just wishes you all the best as you strike out to see if your objective is in this direction, or that direction. The ever-flowing design of the world heavily implies that you are simply existing and moving through this space. There's a lot to see and do if you're willing to deviate from your path, and barely resembles a path at the best of times. And most of these directions don't even hint at being correct or incorrect, they are just a direction with things to see and enemies to fight along the way. Eventually you might take a step back and realize that what you're moving through is a pretty linear pathway, or you might remember the words undead perish and connect some dots when those words flash upon the screen. But by that time, you're ready for the next wishes of all the best, and you pick another direction. But Minecraft, outside of the highly optional and out-of-the-way quests, is just Minecraft. There aren't any conversations or notes explaining what is going on, there are no progress markers punctuating just enough empty space to only imply total and complete freedom. It can be, if you want it to be, only that empty space. It can just be. There is nothing in the game that is going to reward me for building Castle Good. I'm not even sure what a game that demands you to build Castle Good would look like. I'm sure it exists, but if it were to start grading me on things like symmetry or inclusion of specific elements, then that would defeat the purpose for me, as my specific desire would be secondary to the game's requirement to validate my own work to continue. It's definitely not a stretch to say I've put an embarrassing amount of time into Minecraft, at least for my standards. I've been playing off and on since 2011 when I got a laptop that could actually run it properly. This was back before the recipe book, before the dragon, before a lot of what is in the game now was in the game. Over the years, I have developed a process or procedure that has persisted as far as, well, the beginning of quarantine back in mid-March when I jumped into my latest realm server with some friends. Whenever I start a Minecraft world, I build a house. This house generally begins life as a hole in a hill with a bed, a work table, and a forge. 
The next several hours of resource gathering is usually allocated towards turning this abode into something more like this. After that, it's time to build a mine. It usually ends up looking like this because I think this looks cool. I, as in, I and no one else. No one else usually even sees this, and yet I build it this way. After that, I start work on a castle. This is usually pretty freeform. I pick a spot that I think needs a nice piece of architecture, and I just start building rooms and towers and stuff. I try to let the landscape inspire what I build. Will it straddle a river? Will it climb a mountain? Will it be a fortress-like functional structure or some big sprawling and fantastical thing? It usually ends up being geared more towards the latter. Eventually, I start searching for spruce or dark oak wood trees before I can even start thinking about calling a castle finished, because those wood types make the best roofs. At pretty much any time in all of this, I'm likely to start mapping the world. Sometimes this is in assistance of finding the wood types I want, but mostly it's just because I find maps and being able to visualize land masses as they pertain to the space I'm playing in fun. I love looking at world maps and games in general, but with Minecraft there is a sense of comfort and eagerness that comes with them as I pick out places to build different kinds of things like ports, castles, towns, etc. that I will likely never get around to actually attempting, let alone finishing. I could map in Minecraft forever. To me, it's my ultimate open world sandbox game. So much so that I'm not even sure I want to use the term sandbox to describe anything more controlled than Minecraft. This is the map I have for my current world. I haven't done any measurements of any kind, but I'm willing to bet it covers as much if not more space than any other open world game I've played, except for maybe Breath of the Wild, but, you know, give it time. Would you believe me though, if I told you that I decided to go out and do all of this exploring completely of my own volition, and that nowhere in this entire stretch of game space were there any objectives or destinations for me to find? At no point did a little marker appear on the screen telling me I found Townsburg, or the Forgotten Dungeon Mine Ruins, or Castle This Place. Everything I found in the world, every village, mountain, cave, crevasse, they were all just simply there. I mean, of course you would. It's Minecraft. That's what Minecraft does. And yes, I was on a mission the whole time. I was out charting the world. I was looking for places to build. Specifically, in this case, I needed dark oak wood. But the game didn't send me out looking for it. I went looking for it completely for my own purposes. Just like this house that I built, just like this castle that I started, just like this wasteful and impractical mineshaft I build every time. And I found some, eventually, down here. I had finally achieved my objective, and I could now make further progress in the game past an obstacle that was my own making. I wanted what was here instead of what exists back where I started. And what's more, everything I saw on the way was magnificent. If you let the world take you away, there are such beautiful things to see. Landscapes and biomes, rivers, valleys, and mountains. It's all randomly generated and the world doesn't care if you explore it. It is simply there. And so am I. And that's what makes it so cool to me. By the time I end up with a map this big, chances are I have come across places that have struck me. I remember once I found a field of every flower in the game, all clustered together in a clearing in the midst of a dense claustrophobic forest. I once came across a spire-like mountain that reached far above the clouds and further still past my render distance at the time that I never got around to fully exploring. I once found a rounded sheer drop off of a cliff that fostered at least seven distinct waterfalls falling into the ocean that was underscored by a trench going almost as low as bedrock deep beneath the waves. Seeing these kinds of singular things within the context of the digital, randomly generated world is enough to get me to stop and notice. Nowhere else have I experienced this. I mean, sure, I have been on trips to mountains and forested areas in real life, I've gone on wilderness hikes and seen amazing pieces of nature's work. I've seen these things in other games, games that create this effect by building themselves to be that. But there's something about how Minecraft is a computer simulated facsimile of a world that somehow loops back on itself to try and be become like and as those natural wonders I've seen in person. A computer game that doesn't care if I think it's beautiful or grand or important. It is very possibly nothing more than a crisscrossing of tangentially related systems that collaborate to make something my chaotic, fallible, stupid human brain will find beautiful. It creates these things for me to experience and then never once asks me to go out and find them. And if these things are in fact created by programmers, exceptions added to the world generation by its creators, then how amazing is it that this singular world, generated for me, is now something that I'm effectively sharing. A connection I've made with a person I will never know, and who will never know me. Nor will they ever know that they have affected me in such a way. 
I know I'm probably starting to sound a bit like Roy Batty at the end of Blade Runner, but all of these are memories gifted to me by my drive to build castles. Less specifically, my drive to find fulfillment out of my own loosely structured imagination applied to a game engine. Well, this is where I really start my Tears and Rain speech, because you're probably wondering why I don't have footage of these beautiful things I've alluded to. That spire-like mountain, that clearing of flowers... Everything I've shown you in this video is filler, placeholders, or approximations of what I remember. Why do I not have footage of all the things I've built over the years? It's because they're gone. The things I've discovered, the castles I've built, well, here comes failure. Tears meet rain. Minecraft is inherently, or at least functionally is, if even unintentionally, a game of impermanence. As new versions are introduced, old worlds you have generated are no longer compatible, and if you want to play with all of the features in the current build of the game, then you have to start again. And this is to say nothing of the various servers and online experiences I've had with friends in the years before Realms became a thing that simply ceased to exist entirely over time. In every world I start in Minecraft, I go through the motions I described above. The houses, the castles, towns I've put together, even if I'm not very good at it, are always exciting and inspiring to me, while also remaining a comfortable habit that guides me through the beginning of every world I enter. If you've followed my channel in years past, or you've dug through my backlog for some reason, you may remember a time when I was doing big creative Minecraft builds as a celebration of subscriber milestones. It was nice because it allowed me to add a thing that I'm obsessed with, to another thing that offered me fulfillment. But those videos that I'm always kind of on the cusp of unlisting are the last remnant of the worlds those builds exist in. And what of all the other builds I've started? I've probably built or at least started nearly a hundred different large structures in survival. I can access files containing some of them, but the great majority of them are just gone. Most of them gone without anyone else ever having seen them. My desire to play a game comes and goes in waves. There are times when I'll be more than willing to put six hours of a day into Minecraft, only for that to fade over time as I get focused on something else. When I return, the game has often gone through several updates, and I don't want to go back to something. I want a new world, with new things to discover, and new things to build. I remember once I was on a server with friends, and I was having the time of my life putting together my little kingdom down the way from where the others were building, and then one day I logged on to find that they had reset the world, because the rest of the players beat the dragon the previous night and starting over was always the plan. And I was a little annoyed and ticked off at them for doing that thing without due process of democracy, but in the end I kinda wasn't bothered, because starting again meant starting again, which is kinda the best part of the whole thing. I get to fire up that imagination again, wrap myself in old habits, look at new maps, find new places to build, and start building something that I can look forward to seeing when it's finished. I have failed countless times in Minecraft. It's a weird perspective to take on a game like this, I know, especially the way I've played it. I have failed to finish building something I once cared about. I have failed to share this experience with others. I have failed to achieve something I can point to as an accomplishment, but in that, I have found days, possibly weeks worth of meaningful entertainment and comfort throughout my life. As I said before, this video is kind of an apology to myself for not maintaining a creative outlet over the last few years. Other than the Dungeons & Dragons campaigns that I've run in the last few years, there hasn't really been much on my side of things. There has always been a want to make stuff like this, but for various reasons, both trivial and legitimate, these things get sidelined or don't pan out. There's always an anxiety that output needs to be regular or it's not worth it. It's frustrating to me how long it took to properly produce my last few videos how long it's taken me to get back to it in general. I've got musical projects on hold, Dungeons & Dragons stuff always seems to be like a holdover until I feel the time is right to get to the big stuff, and all of that contributes to a desire to remain stagnant because that's easier. But in Minecraft, it's different. The aimless quiet, surmountable obstacles, and easy reassurance that eventually I won't have to worry about this in a while is a comfort in the same space as all of that anxiety. I am allowed to fail here. What I do here is meant to go away, and when it does, I can start over, and no one will know but me. <laughs>